What is up, everybody? JT Dangerous here once again. I am back from my New Japan Pro Wrestling's King of Pro Wrestling 2018 prediction. Now, King of Pro Wrestling happens this Monday morning, live on NewJapanWorld.com from the famous Ryogoku Sumo Hall in Tokyo, Japan. Now, this card is stacked. We got nine big-time matches. Three titles are going to be on the line, and the G1 Climax briefcase will also be defended here. So I'm very excited to do these predictions for you guys this year, and I hope you guys do enjoy. Now, our record coming into King of Pro Wrestling this year after our last New Japan Pro Wrestling event, which was Fighting Spirit Unleashed this past Sunday in Long Beach, California, we went 4-5. So our overall record coming in is 190-99-1. So that was our first losing record in 2018 for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I'm disappointed that my... 14 pay-per-view winning streak came to an end, but there's always room for improvement. So hopefully in this video, we will get back on the winning track and start a brand new winning streak. Now, if you have not checked out my other videos I put up on the channel yesterday, definitely go check them out. There will be another video up this upcoming week. So hopefully you guys will be able to watch all the videos I put up on the channel. As always, show your support on these videos by watching those videos, super kicking that like button and hitting that notification bell and commenting your picks and your opinions in the comment section down below. Now, this is your first time watching my channel as a first time viewer, and this is your first video. Boy, you picked a good one if you're a huge New Japan Pro Wrestling fan like myself and you're ready for this huge King of Pro Wrestling event. Welcome to the Dangerous Alliance. I'm JJ Dangerously. Welcome to the club because this club is. Just. Two. Woo, woo. Again, thank you guys so very much. Now, other than that, Let's get right into these predictions. Starting off with the first matchup, it is for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships. Starting off with the challengers. They are looking to win the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championships. They, they individually have held multiple titles in New Japan Pro Wrestling. They are the legends team of the greatest Junior Heavyweight Champion of all time. One of my favorites, Jushin Thunder Liger and Tiger Mask. And Liger, and Liger and Tiger Mask are challenging the 57th and reigning and defending IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. They are representing Suzuki Gun, Ichiban, consisting of Yoshinobu Kanemaru and El Desperado. Now, Liger and Tiger Mask has, have earned this opportunity when they defeated Despi and Kanemaru at Destruction and Kobe. And they're looking to become, I think, the oldest Junior uh, ju uh, junior heavyweight tag team champions in New Japan Pro Wrestling history. I think I, I think if that is true. But with Super Junior Tag League coming up, this matchup is going to tell us who's going to walk in as the junior heavyweight tag team champions. Then on the other side, you have Despi and Kanemaru who have been the champions since March. And this is their first title defense in a while. So coming from me in this first matchup for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles... I love Jushin Thunder Liger and Tiger Mask as a tag team. They'll be definitely in the tournament, but coming from me, I got to go with Desperado and Kanemaru to retain the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships and defeat Jushin Thunder Liger and Tiger Mask. And now the next matchup, it is a tag team battle featuring on one side you have the team of Homba and the Unchained Gorilla Makabe Togi and their opponents consisting of the youngster Toa Hanare and the former IWGP United States Champion if you can believe it and if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. He is the flamboyant Juice Robinson. Now, with World Tag League coming up in a, I think in a month's time, this is definitely a tune-up match for Homba and Makabe, which they're going to be back in the World Tag League, I think, for the first time in a couple years. But start uh, coming off with what happened at Fighting Spirit Unleashed with Juice Robinson losing the IWGP United States Champion coming from me, maybe the stupidest decision that uh, New Japan has done in a long time, taking the belt off of the flamboyant one. So coming from me in this tag team matchup, I'm gonna go with Homba and Makabe to defeat uh, Toa Hanare and Juice Robinson. And now the next matchup, it is an eight man tag team battle featuring on one side, they are representing the Bullet Club Elite consisting of 
Pro Wrestling's only crown jewel, take that WWE, Chase Owens. You have the man who I think will hold a singles title before the end of the year. He is Bullet Club Elite's resident hangman. And if you know his music, his old music, you know who I'm talking about. He is Hangman, Adam Page, and their partners are the former IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. They are still the they are still two thirds of the Ring of Honor World Six Man Tag Team Champions, and they will be defending those belts at Glory by Honor this Friday against SoCal Uncensored. They are coming from me, the greatest tag team in the world today. And if you know their music, you know who I'm talking about. Rio Goku, you ready for a? Uh Super Kick Party! They are Matt, Nick, the Young Bucks, and their opponents representing the Bullet Club OGs. They are the reigning never open weight six-man tag team champions. Champions Starting off with first, he coming from me is the number one contender to whoever wins the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title later tonight. He is Bone Soldier, Taiji Ishimori. Next, he is the Bullet Club's OG resident boss, and if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. He is the underboss, Bad Luck Fale, and their partners are the now reigning and defending and now four-time IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. They, and if you know their music, you know who I'm talking about. They are consisting of the Silverback Tongaloa and the Bad Boy Tamatonga, the Gorillas of Destiny, or God. Now, we all saw what happened at Fighting Spirit Unleashed on Sunday. The Gorillas of Destiny regaining the IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team titles, defeating the Young Bucks. And the biggest question coming in for the Bullet Club Elite is, is Matt Jackson's back 100%. The back injury came back and bit the Young Bucks in the ass in that match against the Grills of Destiny. And that's the biggest question coming in. Is Matt Jackson's back 100%? Now, same thing with, um, we're going to see if whoever wins the junior title, I'm still saying Bone Soldier will get his opportunity because he rightfully deserves to be the number one contender. So, coming from me. In this eight-man tag team war between Bullet Club Elite and the Bullet Club OGs. I think we know who the weak link is in this match. Sorry, Chase. So coming from me in this matchup, I am taking the Bullet Club OGs to defeat the Bullet Club Elite by any means. And now the next matchup. It is a six-man tag team battle. On one side, they are all representing chaos, consisting of the former Never Open Weight Champion, a former IWGP Heavyweight Tag Team Champion, and if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about.
He is the Stone Pitbull Tomohiro Ishii. Next, he is the former two-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion, and hopefully he'll be moving up to the heavyweights very soon. And he is, if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. He is the Aerial Assassin, he is the Sky King, he is Will Ospreay, and finally, he is the former IWGP Never Openweight Champion, and he's looking to bring back some gold to chaos, and if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. He is Hiroki Goto, and their opponents are representing Suzuki Gun, Ichiban, consisting of the Master of the Iron Claw, Iazuka, the new Never Open Weight Champion, hopefully accompanied by his beautiful valet, Miho Abe. He is Lord Tai Chi, and the leader of Suzuki Gun, the King, the Sadist, Minoru Suzuki. Now, this matchup is definitely big, big, because whoever wins, whoever wins on the Chaos side could get a opportunity at the never open weight title i know goto's wanting an opportunity at his belt after he lost it to tai chi at destruction and beppu ishii may have won a, won a shot at that belt and hell even osprey has an opportunity to to get a never open weight title opportunity he already had a ring of honor opportunity at death before dishonor so that moving the heavyweight for osprey is getting closer and closer so coming from me in the six-man tag team matchup Ah, man. I'm going to take the team of Ishii, Hiroki Goto, and Will Ospreay to defeat Iazuka, Taichi, and Minoru Suzuki by any means. And now the next matchup. It is a huge eight-man tag team battle featuring on one side. They are also representing Chaos, consisting of the former two-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Champions, Sho Yo Rapungi 3K. You have the Sublime Master Thief Toriyanu, and you have the former and longest reigning IWGP Heavyweight Champion. And if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. He is Rainmaker, Kazuchika Okada, and their opponents, all representing Los Ingobernables de Apon, consisting of Cold Skull Sonata, MX Bushi, the newest member of Los Ingobernables de Apon, which is a mystery and the leader of LIJ, and if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. Ooh, Naito! He is Tetsuya Naito. Now this matchup is very intriguing because of this mystery newest member of Los Ingobernables Day Upon. It was announced on Monday that there will be a new member of LIJ that's going to debut at King of Pro Wrestling here. And my biggest question is, who could it be? 
Who could this new member be? Could it be somebody, could it be a free agent? Could it be somebody from Mexico for CMLL? That's the biggest question. And this is gonna be the first time since 2016 they have added any members to Los Ingobernables de Japón. It's a very exclusive club in New Japan. So whoever's the new mystery man for LIJ, they're gonna definitely pay dividends to be teaming with Naito, Evil, Bushi, and Hiromu when he comes back. I know this is Chaos vs. LIJ, but the intrigue of who this mystery man is is really making this a very compelling match. So coming from me in this eight-man tag team battle between Chaos and Los Ingobernables de Apon, I got to go with LIJ to get it done with this mystery, mystery member of LIJ. And they will defeat the Chaos team of Okada, Yano, and Rapungi 3K. En serio. Ma. G. De. Tranquilo. Asienayo. And now the next matchup. It is a special singles grudge match on one side. He is also representing Los Ingobernables de Apone. And he is one of my all-time favorites. And if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. He is king of darkness, evil, because this is evil. Everything is evil. Subdewa. All of it. Everything is. Yuda and his opponent representing Suzuki Gun Ichiban consisting of the 2018 New Japan Cup winner and a man who has had LIJ's number throughout 2018. Hopefully he'll be accompanied by his hype man Takamichinoku and if you know who it is he is pro wrestling and submission master. He is ZSJ and if you know his music you know who I'm talking about. Zach Saber Jr. Now, this whole rivalry started at Destruction and Beppu in a multi-man match where Zack Saber Jr. defeated Evil in a what they called an upset, and and it continued the dominance of Zack Saber Jr. against Suzuki Gun. And then at Fighting Spirit Unleashed in a six-man tag team match, Zack Saber Jr. defeated Evil once again. So to say that Zack Saber Jr. has had Lij's number is an understatement. Let's see, he tapped out Naito in the New Japan Cup, tapped out Sonata in the New Japan Cup. Denied Naito to win the G1 Climax by pinning him and he's beaten Evil not once but twice and you can tell Evil is definitely Cracking because he didn't like he did he doesn't expect to see Zack Sabre Jr. A guy who's pretty much skinny guy and And he's getting pinned by him. It's kind of embarrassing for Evil to take pins like that but this matchup is big, and the only way you can beat Zack Sabre Jr., you have to make sure you do you wrestle your game. Because if you wrestle Zack Sabre Jr.'s game, the only thing you're going to be doing is just tapping out. So coming from me in this special singles grudge match, and let me just say it right now, do not be surprised. Jericho is going to be in that building, I'm telling you. Because they're gonna, Jericho hasn't been seen since Dominion, so don't be surprised he may show up here at Ria Goku. So coming from me... If Evil sticks to his game plan, he can get it done. So I'm going to take King of Darkness Evil to defeat Zack Sabre Jr. And now the next matchup. It is for the vacant IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. On one side, he is the former five-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion looking to make it number six. He is the ace of the Juniors division. And if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about.
He is Time Splitter, Kushida, and his opponent, representing the Bullet Club Elite. He is a former IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. He is a former Never Openweight Six-Man Tag Team Champion, and he's a former Ring of Honor World Champion, and he's looking to bring even more gold to Bullet Club Elite. And if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. Whoop, whoop! Whoop, whoop! Whoop, whoop! He is the villain, Marty Scrawl. Now, this is the fourth meeting one-on-one -on -one between Kushida and Marty Scrawl. Kushida has owned Marty one-on-one. -on -one. Kushida is 3-0, and oh, and he's looking to make it a clean sweep. Now, Starting off with Kushida, his trip to his his road to the finals came in the hands of defeating Bushi at Destruction in Kobe, and he's looking to once again hold the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title and become the legit ace of the Junior Heavyweights division. Then on the other side, you have Marty Scrow, who is coming off his win over Will Ospreay at Fighting Spirit Unleashed to get here, and this is his opportunity to once again hold the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title. And this one's going to be a good one. These ma these guys' matches have been pretty stellar. We've seen them in the best of the Super Juniors. We saw them at War of the Worlds and Best in the World. We've seen them go back and forth. Kushida, the last person to, uh, Kushida was the man who ended Scroll's Ring of Honor television title reign. So there's some history here. So coming from me in the finals of the for for the finals for the vacant IWGP Junior Heavyweight Title Tournament. A couple weeks ago, I was thinking Kushida's going to win this belt back. Makes the most sense. But thinking about it a couple weeks, to continue the Bullet Club versus Bullet Club OG thing, Marty has to win so Ishimori can challenge him, and then we can have Marty versus Taiji Ishimori for the Junior Heavyweight title. So coming from me, I am taking the villain Marty Scroll to win and become a two-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion and defeat Kushida. And now the next matchup. It is for the G1 Climax briefcase and, and a shot at the IWGP Heavyweight Championship at Wrestle Kingdom 13. Starting off with the challenger. He is representing the new chaos and he is accompanied by the man who stabbed Okada in the back at Destruction in Kobe Gato. He is the former IWGP United States Champion and if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. Time to breathe with. He is Switchblade, Jay White. And Jay White is challenging the winner of the G1 Climax 28 Championship and the holder of the G1 Climax briefcase. He is the only man in history to hold the IWGP title seven times. He is the ace of the universe. And if you know his music, his old music, you know who I'm talking about. He is Hiroshi Tanahashi. Now, this is the third meeting between these two one-on-one. -on -one. The record is one-on-one, -on -one, so this is an, an, indeed the rubber matchup. Now, we all saw what happened at the G1 Climax with Jay White defeating Tanahashi, and he has rightfully earned this opportunity, even though Tanahashi picked Okada first, and Jay White definitely was not all about that. And he's looking to become the first man to ever defeat the G1 Climax winner. Remember... Uh, uh, challengers are winless against the G1 Climax champions, uh, briefcase holders. So, Jay White is looking to become the first 
to become the first man to ever do it. And with the help of Gato in his corner, and we saw how, how much he paid dividends in that tag team match at Fighting Spirit Unleashed, Jay White is sitting in the driver's seat to maybe become the first man to ever defeat the G1 Climax briefcase holder. The only other side you have Hiroshi Tanahashi coming in after him, def after defeating Kazuchika Okada at Destruction and Kobe to retain his briefcase and continuing the, the undefeated streak of G1 Climax briefcase holders against their challengers. And the last time Tanahashi beat Switchblade Jay White, you got to go all the way back to Wrestle Kingdom 12. That's how long it's been since Tanahashi's beaten Jay White. And, Jay and Tanahashi has done it all. I mean, he has done it all. He is the ace of the universe. For no, he ain't the he ain't the he's not the ace of the universe for nothing, folks. And he has proven that he can overcome any odds that come against him, including Jay White, including Okada. So coming from me, for the briefcase and the shot at the IWGP Heavyweight Title at Wrestle Kingdom 13. As much as I want to see Jay White win this briefcase, because with this with the new chaos coming soon. I can just feel that Jay White, again, he is the best damn heel in New Japan Pro Wrestling right now, bar none. Agree to disagree, but he is the best heel in New Japan right now. But coming from me, I got to go with the ace of the universe. He's going to overcome the odds once again. So I'm taking Hiroshi Tanahashi to retain the G1 Climax briefcase and defeat Switchblade Jay White. Go ace! And now the main event. It is a triple threat match for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. Starting off with the challenger. First, he is the reigning and NWA World Heavyweight Champion. He is also the reigning Ring of Honor World Six-Man Tag Team Champions with the Young Bucks. And he is the brand new, surprisingly, the IWGP United States Champion. He is accompanied by his beautiful wife, Brandy. And if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. Do it all to get them on the feet. He is the American Nightmare Cody. Next, he is the former New Japan Cup winner, a former Best of Super Juniors champion, a man who made it to the finals of this year's G1 Climax, and he is one half of the Golden Lovers, and if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about, and Kane Gaiman's favorite. He is Golden Star, Ibushi Kota, and Cody and Kota Ibushi are challenging this 66 and reigning and defending an undisputed IWGP Heavyweight Champion, the greatest IWGP Heavyweight Champion right now, and he is the best damn wrestler on the planet today. He is the god of professional wrestling, and if you know his music, you know who I'm talking about. He is the best bout machine, Kenny Omega. Now, this matchup is historic. This is only the third ever triple threat match for the IWGP heavyweight title. Now, the first one happened all the way back in October of 2005, where Brock Lesnar became the IWGP 
heavyweight champion by defeating Fujita and Masahiro Chono. And then the last time it happened, happened four years ago at the first ever War of the Worlds tour, first War of the Worlds show for Ring of Honor New Japan Pro Wrestling, where AJ Styles was defending the IWGP heavyweight title against Michael Elgin and Kazuchika Okada. So seeing triple threat matches for the IWGP be heavyweight title are rare this is only the third in history now this match came to be after the golden lovers defeated okada and ishii uh, at fighting spirit unleashed we were about to get maybe the match a lot of people have been waiting for omega defending the belt against kota bushi but out of nowhere rearing his ugly head again cody came out and 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 thought of doing a triple threat match to have all three guys facing it off for the IWGP heavyweight title and then it was then confirmed now starting off with Cody he's coming off winning the IWGP United States title even though he doesn't need to be the US champion and he's coming in maybe having his best month so he's having his best month last year he won the NWA world title at All In he he produced All In maybe the best independent show in history he's a Ring of Honor six man tag team champions with the Bucks and he's looking to hold even more gold and add the, the IWGP title to his belt collection even though again I have my problems with Cody winning the US title because it kind of ruined the moment for Juice Robinson, a man who fought for that belt and then just lose it in his first title defense to Cody. I did not like that. That was maybe the worst call New Japan has done in a long time. Then you have Kota Ibushi, who I think got jobbed out of being uh, getting a one-on-one -on -one opportunity against his best friend, Kenny Omega. But I get what they're trying to do. They don't want to do Kota Ibushi versus Kenny Omega too early. We may get that match at Power Struggle in November, which I wouldn't have any problem with. So Ibushi is just there to maybe get that reaction. The only other side you have Kenny Omega, who's coming in as the reigning champion. This is his second title defense since winning the belt. Uh, no, this is his... Uh, uh, third title defense, excuse me, since he won the belt at Dominion. And history is definitely on his side. Now, here's another dangerous fact. Since 2012, the IWGP heavyweight title has only changed hands once. Champions here are 5-1. and one. And the last time the, w, uh, the IWGP title changed hands, you got to go all the way back to four years ago at King of Pro Wrestling in 2014 when Tanahashi defeated then champion AJ Styles. So it's been a while since the IWGP title has changed hands in Rio Goku and Sumo Hall. So coming from me in this third ever triple threat match for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship, I kind of think this match is very predictable because we all know Kota Ibushi is not going to get pinned here and the only person that's going to get pinned is Cody. So coming from me, I am taking Kenny Omega to retain the IWGP heavyweight title and defeat Cody and Kota Ibushi. And those were my King of Pro Wrestling 2018 predictions. Now, I want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Comment below, who do you have winning all these matchups? Who do you have winning the triple threat match between Omega, Cody, and Ibushi? Who do you have winning the briefcase between Switchblade and Tanahashi? And who do you have winning the vacant junior heavyweight title between Kushida and Marty Scroll? Let me know your comments down below and your opinions. Let's have a conversation about it. Of course, I'm always on to see your comment, like it, and of course, reply right back to you. Because comments are absolutely always welcome come on his channel. Now, I do want to thank you guys so very much for watching this video today. Now, before you guys go, you guys can never forget to do this. That like button, comment, share with friends, of course, super kick that like button like only you guys can. Of course, you can never forget to do this as well. That subscribe button become part of this bigger and dangerous, dangerous alliance. And I will see you guys later this week for my Major League Baseball postseason, American League and National League divisional predictions. Later days, guys. And peace.